Hello, welcome back to Rods Menagerie. Uh, today I'm going to work on another Sphero Droid. I uh, tracked down a BB-8 with uh, the same issue. It's not charging and I'm going to take the little guy apart and I bet you the batteries are swelling and need to be replaced. So I located some on Amazon which should fit the bill. I have two of them because this little guy did some research should take two and um, I'm going to try to put them in today. Unlike the R2-D2, the BB-8 does not have any screws to remove. It's actually, I guess, glued together. This There's one seam running down the entire length of the sphere, and I'm going to have to cut there. So I'm going to get started on that with a Dremel, and then take it apart, take the batteries out, replace the batteries, and then glue it back together. Hopefully I have a steady enough hand to follow this line. I don't want to... Uh, Screw that up. I'm going to make small cuts so that I minimize the chance of uh, slipping off of the line. I'm not sure how deep this is, so my initial cuts are going to be shallow. I don't want to just dig in and then cut some internal component that's critical. I want to point out in this section here, the seam is not actually following the line on the droid. I don't know if that really matters, but I'm just going to make sure that I follow the seam itself. It realigns itself on one side, so it's probably just whatever they use to give it the BB-8 look. It's just slightly off from the seam. Not a big deal. I'm cutting a little deeper at this point, but still taking it st small steps at a time so I uh, don't, again, cut into something important. Well, the moment of truth. It's time to pull the little guy apart. The plastic piece that the head attaches to has magnets at the top, and it just comes right off without any screws. Just set that aside. And then it looks like there are two screws holding the, uh, I guess it looks like the circuit board on to the actual main body. I set the uh, screws in the BB-8, one of the BB-8 halves so that I wouldn't lose them. The two halves are held together by the actual electrical pins coming off of the board going into the main body. Um, there's no screws, just gently pry it apart. Now you just need to remove this cover that's on top of the batteries. There's uh, no screws. It's just a couple of little clips you have to push in on, on two sides, and then it'll pull off. Time to take the batteries out. Uh, they're connected together on one small plug in the center, and uh, so they need to come out together. The uh, plug will actually have this little uh, clear plastic cover on it that you need to set aside. I just added mine to, to the where I kept the two screws. I apologize for the lack of focus on this, but uh, I just wanted to show a quick side-by-side -side of the original bloated battery on the left and then the new battery on the right. And uh, I've heard bad things can happen if you puncture one of these uh, batteries, but uh, so be careful. Okay, I am going to start soldering these and I am by no means an expert, but I can get the job done. So feel free to laugh at my soldering technique, but I'm okay with it. Ideally, you want the wires to be the same length as the originals. So just uh, make sure you measure it or I eyeballed it, just whatever works for you to make sure that the wire at the end of the day is about the same length as what you pulled out of the uh, unit. Then you need to uh, actually strip a little bit of the wire covering off and uh, go figure. My uh, wire cutters uh, were slightly off on the gauge. These are very small wires but I was able to get a slight cut on it and pull enough off with my fingers to get the job done. Repeat the steps with one of the actual new batteries. And uh, what's nice about this is the actual gauge was fitting my wire cutters, so this went much more quickly. I prepped a couple pieces of heat shrink and then put one on each wire, connected the wires, soldered them up, 
and then uh, got my lighter out and shrunk the heat shrink and good to go. Please note that the new batteries came in with uh, red and black wires. Uh, red was positive, black was negative. And then the batteries removed from the unit had different color colors as well. Uh, one had red and white, and the red was positive, white was negative. The other one had blue and black, and blue was positive, black was negative. I went ahead and tested voltage before I did the other battery, and um, it worked, and everything's fine. Repeat the steps for the uh, second battery as well, and then you can test voltage. If you don't happen to have a multimeter to test the voltage, you can either you know get one off of Amazon, or you can actually just plug it into the unit when you're done and uh, test it. I apologize for the blurriness of this shot, but it's important. The black plug that the batteries uh, attach to needs to go in a specific way. There are six holes on it, but only four of the pins are used. And if you notice here on the main board, there's a slight blank closest to the center. So you want to make sure that the uh, plug is aligned with the two unused pins closest to the center. While I was putting the batteries back in, uh, my solder points were not ideally located, but uh, they got the job done. So it took me a little work to get the batteries back in. But uh, also, don't forget to put that little clear plastic piece back on top of the actual black plug that goes with the batteries. Clip the little cover back into place that protects the batteries. Put the uh, main board back on top of the unit. Just be careful with the pins. Make sure they're aligned properly before you start putting any pressure. Screw the main board back into place. Set the plastic piece back on top of the unit. Time for the first test. I just got the uh, charging pad and set it on the desk and then set the actual piece inside of it beforehand, then opened up the app. The app located BB-8 and the front of the charger shows a blinking light showing it's charging. So it looks like we have success and it's time to put him back together. I started off by cleaning off any extra plastic shavings that were still stuck to the housing from the Dremel. I did a test alignment. I wanted to see how it looked after being cut open, and uh, it looks good to me, so it's time to glue. I had a vise that was not uh, attached to a tabletop, so I brought it up here, and uh, what I did is I got that the paper towels and then used it to hold the two halves together while the uh, mechanism was inside. I uh, did this so that I wouldn't damage the uh, housing. I got so excited that I got the epoxy that I uh, glued it and forgot to hit record. So these are the two chambers, mixed it in here, and then applied to the droid. It's supposed to set in five minutes. It's been 15, so I'm going to test it, take it out of the vise here now, and hopefully nothing falls apart. Well, that's a good sign. It's still sticky. I'm cleaning off the excess glue with alcohol. The little guy's working now and charging. And uh, the only thing I'm not happy about is there is a slight offset on my two halves, which causes issues with the head on occasion, but uh, eh, not enough to really bother me a lot. It's just uh, I can feel it. But uh, yeah, it worked. And uh, thanks for watching Rod's Menagerie. And I will put links to the batteries I used in the description.